Good evening, fellow punters. The clock on the wall says 7.33 on uh, Tuesday evening with a few for tomorrow. Nearly run out of petrol. Can't run out of petrol. And the price of it. Um, an, all, an all right sort of a day. We had our two pint winner. Um, can't remember his name. Mind is gone blank. Angel's Dawn. Uh, needed every yard of the three mile. The extra furlong uh, suited. As I thought it would. And uh, a good winner. He's a good gossoon. Uh, Keen Quirk. He had a good double there today. Uh, I don't know what happened the first one. It wasn't off the yard. He was within a few lengths of the one that was second today. But there was no money for it. And went back to last before the turn for home. I'd love to have heard the debriefing in the parade ring afterwards to hear from Luke Dempsey what he thought. And I thought we're awful unlucky, even though we're third in the seven o'clock there. Um, they cut their, each other's throats at the favourite and Vespasian and uh, set it up for the two closers. Actually, the one that won it, I tipped him up on the 17th of November at uh, Chelmsford. And... Uh, I think he was third that day. Had a, I think I could have had a one and a half or two point win on him that day. Um, I know some of you probably check it and tell me. And But the, the time of the race was 57.1 or 2 seconds. That's desperate fast. He would want a six in running. So he just he just ran out of petrol. If, if he got an easier lead, and I thought he might, I didn't think Haya May should take him on that early. Took him on from the get-go. Cut each other's throats and uh, went one to six run. It just didn't last it out. It was a pity because uh, I thought he might win tonight. He drifted out to a great SP as well. Anyway, it's not that but this. Uh, tomorrow. There's a few interesting horses that I thought I thought had chances tomorrow. Sam's Adventure is running in a veteran's chase for the first time. He's 11. But he had a good run the last day and two nine-year-olds beat him. Uh, it was in the, it was the north, and was in Catrick as well. It was in the north, the uh, Yorkshire handicap chase. The north, yes, Bushy Park, and he cleared the gee, um. And he was one twenty two that day, and he's down to one twenty, and have a three pound claim on. So that he's carrying five pound, five pound lighter, one twenty pound. Uh, Wedges on him tomorrow. Um, I thought that uh, being an 11 year old, uh, Ellison is a fairly decent forum. I thought uh, that would be a, a point to win on that. Uh, the 230 at Newcastle. There's two flat horses tomorrow that I thought we need to get them on the bus. Back, out, back it in there, one E, and we'll, put, we'll load them up. This horse ran twice with Michael Stout. Uh, and it went off at odds on the second time in uh, Windsor last May. Uh, brought it in to uh, Jarvis. I thought he had wind surgery, but maybe he hadn't. Maybe there's something else I was thinking of. But this was his. And he ran green coming around the turn for home. He's in the pink cap on the left hand side. It'd be two from the left as you look at it. Behind them, switching to the outer is into the spotlight as they make the run down the hill towards the final quarter mile. And now the front two race on. Crystal Delight and into the spotlight. These two go clear of the others as they turn for home. Crystal Delight just blowing the turn, running wide. Also forcing wide into the spotlight who now switches inside. But the leader is Crystal Delight travelling well for Jim Crowley and has a furlong to go. And Crystal Delight now starts to open up inside the final furlong. He's drawing right away, Crystal Delight. And he'll get off the mark at the third attempt for William Jarvis and Jim Crowley. A double for the former champion. Crystal Delight wins second. Crowley was on him that day. It wasn't much of a race, but uh, he's... Rated 83. Yeah, he had wind surgery. I thought that to him all right. Um, second run back. Uh, the long stretch should uh, suit him. Um, there's a question mark about a couple of them. Dream Harder has won three there. 
uh, Zealot had won three um, or four. So I'd, if if there's improvement to come in them in this horse, it'll be tomorrow uh, with Kieran Schumacher up for Willie Jervis. And his third favourite, I thought he was worth the shot tomorrow. Um, something similar in a race at Kempton. Uh, First Emperor. This started off its career in Ireland with Donica O'Brien and it ran in nice races. It didn't run as a two year old. It's only started running yeah, the sixth of April last year. That boundless ocean, it was only four lengths off him, and that's in the one for its last summer a couple of times in Leprestown over seven furlongs. Um you can see he he was behind Newfoundland, good heart, Miguel and Strait. Um Rated 82 at the start. I'll show you his two runs. This was the first. He's at the back of the pack or nearly at the back. He's in red and black. This was his first run in a long time in England. Inside Kevin Start as they head towards the home turn. And they're being led by Mucka Magic and Gustav Holst. And now here comes Tebow on the outside. Military decoration is being shaken up too. Behind those, September Power moving quite well as they head towards the turn. Mucka Magic keeping wide, but leading to on the outside, Tebow to the inside. Now September Power begins to get going. Then comes Pleasure Garden from Military Decoration. Arab Escato, very wide is Stiletto with a lot to do. Half a furlong to go. It's Mucka Magic in front for Safi Osborne here, leading up to September Power. And it's Mucka Magic will win. Another one for Gay Kellaway. Mucka Magic to September Power second, third Pleasure Garden, fourth Tebow. Are well, you watching him coming up the stretch? He wasn't too busy on him. And then the last time. He went off 28 to 1 and he won and he came up and now he's going to come up on the rail this time. He gets a great ride on the rail from Luke Morris. And he bet a horse, a decent horse that has run well since that Eddie had. Well, September Power is still moving with purpose, but has got a wall of horses in front and now starts to angle to the outside. Heads then about to turn for home in the opener, heading inside the final furl and a half. Sharp Distinction still has the lead. Etty Attis now winding up to produce a challenge. Up on the inside is Smith, coming through as well. His first Emperor with a real rattle inside the final furlong. It's up on the inside, first Emperor being tackled by Etiat on the outside. First Emperor and Etiat driving for the line. First Emperor just in front and does enough. First Emperor has won the opener. For He's actually a half-brother to Sky Lantern. Who was a Group One winning horse? Won the Mayor and didn't it for uh, with uh, which is Richard Hannon. Five to two hundred to thirty three to one. I think that could have more improvement in it. And Kimpton is something similar surface than uh, as Lingfield, and that I thought it had a, a chance tomorrow. And one horse in uh, Fairy House. It opened up five to two nine to four. Carbon King. Any time you see Fox Labelle, who's the ultimate pig of a horse, when he's third favourite, you have to say, I, I, I can't see how that can ever win a race. We, we, we get, we gave up that a long time ago, didn't we? But this, he moved from Imjet Tyner to uh, uh, Dennis Queeley, but I thought he won very well the last time. His first run there was in Galway, behind Mihal in a hurl race, and then. A chase race behind Jerry Calam and Mastermind the last day. Um, he won well enough. He was off 83. Uh, he went up £10, I think. But he's a fine big horse. Yeah. And there, there isn't an awful lot in the race. Um, I got 9 to 4 earlier. I missed the 5 to 2. So that would be our two point win tomorrow on that horse. And the Tiestes is on Thursday and I am going. I'm taking the day off. We're heading around nine or half nine and I got good news as well. I'm not driving. I'm getting picked up. So there's a bit of disappointment with me though that um, Deal Care didn't get declared uh, today. Um and he was my each I had money on, so that's gone in the bin. Um 
And Scary at 10 has a run this year. It was uh, eighth in it last year uh, without a run, without a prep run. Elliot was out of form until today, but he had a double. So that's he has there's 18 running, and he has nine of them. Um, Adrian Heskett, of course, stays with uh, the McNeil owned uh, Scary Tin. He's the retained rider. Pinceful of Lead has his prep run. You have Coco Beach, who Ben Harvey taken off five. Then you have uh, Frontal Assault, that ran for us uh, a couple of times. Uh, it won for us in Galway, wasn't it? Um, but there's a big gamble on today going on on Espanito Bello. It opened up at 16s and it's into 13 to 2, 8 to 1, 9 to 1 with Corals. Opened at 16 to 1 today when the decks came out. So uh, that seems to be the money horse. But it did, it got on back for him. It had, it beat, uh, well, no, it was beaten by Coco Beach, wasn't it? In uh, It made a howler of a mistake at the last a couple of years ago, which was rated 146 at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, February 2021. But Coco Beach went on to win uh, the Thaestas after that, didn't they? Um, but he should have won that race. And that was a group two, three miles heavy ground. So he hasn't ran since Galway, and that was in a hurdle race. So he looks to have been put away specifically for this race. So the money today suggests that that has has been the target whether he's and he seems to be well handicapped I mean he's down 17 pounds from uh, when he was 146 he's only 9 uh, I don't know how oh no he's 140 it was over hurled yeah uh, and Mikey O'Sullivan taken off 5 so he's run off 135 Donkey Years is JP's only entry and only declared runner he won for us in Punchestown and if I get this up, I'm waffling on a bit here. Bash the bookies. Over and out. Will be... Um, I don't know about... I must mention it to the Stig. I don't know. I'll be back Thursday evening to do the... Uh, we might have to leave it until Friday. I'll see how he, what he says. Bash the bookies. Over.